Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So today we're going to be actually trying something slightly complicated. I'm going to try to terraform two planets without the use of any stars, so their only source of heat is going to be the gravitational forces they exert on each other. I don't really know how well this is going to work, uh, but we'll see. So we need two planets that are about the same size, or just to get them by... Uh, Nary orbiting each other, but I don't... Oh, there we go. So this close, we can see that it does heat up the planets for sure, but 4,000 degrees Celsius is a bit too hot for life. And another problem is in different cycles of this uh, binary system, the temperature fluctuates rapidly. So we have to find a way to keep it stable. And an atmosphere will help us keeping it stable. Uh, the question is... How stable can we get it? So these planets are pretty close. Uh, but I think they're too far for the rush limit to actually kick in. I don't think they're going to heat up. They're too far away. So we need to find a balance here. And this may take a few tries. So I'm thinking if we go about... What is this? 100,000 kilometers away? The sizes of the planets also make a big difference, so doing it randomly like this may not be our best bet. We may have to get two similarly sized planets in the future. That one's way too small. Yeah, there we go. So we'll try 50,000 kilometers. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to start seeing some heat, at least on the smaller planet here. No, still, still absolute zero. So I guess we'll bring it into 30,000 kilometers. Now, this is getting very close. There we go. So, this is working, but it's at a thousand degrees, which means that we're getting close to the numbers we want. That's at least, that's still three times cooler than the last successful attempt at the rush limit. Um, we could try, we need two evenly uh, massed planets. Oh, these are close. But I'm just going to save this one. And from now on, we're going to use Turquit. <laughs> we're going to have two Turquits. Uh, let's go ahead and find it. Q-R-S-T. And let's go ahead, because the same size gives them even heating. And we'll try 35, 35,000 kilometers. Still getting over a thousand degrees. Probably because they're both rather large. We will try 40,000. Uh, this time we're staying at about sub a thousand. Oh, but it fluctuates so rapidly. That That's the real challenge about this. It's going to be really hard to get anything that resembles a stable... Uh, temperature. Back to 50,000 kilometers. Okay, so we've, we may have something here. Come on. Ooh, it's stopping at like 100, 150 degrees. Oh, it's dropping. Okay, so with this planet, I think we can actually get this stable at... 55,000. We were at 50,000 last time, right? So 55,000 kilometers away. I really hope we can pull this off. That'd be so cool. <laughs> um, an entirely different means of terraforming. Here we go. We're still in the negatives. Ah, oh, darn. Come on. Oh, it's heating up. It's heating up heating up we haven't factored in an atmosphere yet either so that may help so it's at negative 27 degrees without an atmosphere negative 15 degrees so let's go ahead and go to our atmospheric mass and set it to one atmosphere now i don't know if it'll factor in i don't know if this is going to factor in the uh I don't know if the temperature is only affected by solar radiation. Nope, it looks like the temperature 
is certainly uh, being affected by the atmosphere. It looks like we've got 50 degrees Celsius, which is warm, very warm, but it's not boiling water warm. It's some life could survive on that warm. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw our atmospheric pressure to one atmosphere on this one. And now we should have two moderately uh, temperatured. I don't think that's the uh, moderately heated <laughs> planets. At a good distance from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this version of it. We're going to go ahead and save atmosphere version. And we did 55 that time. And that was a little bit too hot. So let's try 57. It's like baking a nice cake. Except planets. And not at all like baking a nice cake. Alright, 57,000. Let's see how this does. Now, they are a little bit bigger than Earth, but I did take that into account. Um, being bigger than Earth gives them a lot more tidal forces, and that'll, that basically is what's letting us generate so much heat. Otherwise, they'd have to be closer together, and they'd have to be close together at a point where I couldn't really get an exact value. Look how close that is. If that just stays above free... Oh, okay. Never mind. I was feeling very confident for a second. So 56,000. It's getting very precise now. 56,000. I'm off by 16, but I think I think that's enough of a margin of error there uh, that I'm safe. Come on. You can do it. 20 degrees. I'll settle with 20 to over 10. Ah, uh, the problem is... Like I said, they're messing with each other so much. Yeah, they're both they're both in the negatives now. So fifty five thousand degrees is uh, fifty five thousand kilometers is too hot, and fifty six is too cold. So fifty five five hundred fifty five thousand five. 100 kilometers one kilometer off that time look at that that is accuracy right there okay so it is definitely cooling down much more slowly this time ah oh, but it speeds up it's brutal absolutely brutal the temperature dropping you either get the runaway heat effect or you get the runaway freezing effect Without a star, it's really hard to keep things stable. It's got to be hotter than that. So, I'm going to say 55, 100. I mean, now it may just be the same as when we did it last time. I don't know why. I don't know why we're getting it so cold now. Um, come on. You're so close. Just steady out. Just steady out right there. Why does the temperature keep dropping? You're failing me, planets. All of you failing me. I guess we're just going to go back to 55,000. Something seems different since we added the atmospheres. It seems like they're getting much colder. Let's try 50,000. Yeah, the temperature is even dropping at 50,000 now. Oh, no. Oh, it's going up. Actually, it's pretty steady. Between 90 degrees and 70. I'm going to take that back in a second if this doesn't turn around. Um, Part of this could be because of the albedo of the planet, but I guess if I tweak that... That should only really affect sunlight heating the planet, though. And yeah, it does. That's that's what I thought. It would have been weird if that affected it. So we've got it steady at about 80 to 100 degrees now. Which means at 50,000, we got it to there. So if we just go slightly further out, like 
51,000. We should be getting close to the number we need. It's a slow and steady process. That gonna cool down. It's cooling down a bit. Still over 60. I'm not settling until we have something humans could live on comfortably. Uh, let's try 53,000. Now we're getting kind of in between. In between what we know works and what we know doesn't work. Okay, so we're getting into the 40s. Good. 30s. 20s. Come on, I can I can live with 20s. Uh I mean it's not comfortable, but you know Can I get a conversion to Fahrenheit phone, please? That would be nice. 25, that's actually not too bad. I don't That's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the average temperature though. So, but I guess the planets would be pretty evenly heated by this. It wouldn't be like day and night where one side of, yeah, yeah, that, the, I would live on a planet that's 77 degrees. I'm not going to complain about that. Oh, it's cooling down a little bit more. Let's just, let's just hope nothing funky happens and we lose it because now we have to do some actual terraforming. So now that we have the right temperature, we're going to go ahead and set the composition to put water on. The oh, that was pretty, pretty fast and pretty extreme right there. I did not mean to cover everything with water. I just wanted to cover a little bit with water. There we go. There we go. They're twins. Look at them go. They are fantastic. Okay, looking good. Can I change the colors on these? Yes, I can. Mid elevation, I'm going to set to green. Um, do I still have the other ones? Oh, there it goes. Very nice. Low elevation, I'll set to like a sandy color. And high elevation, I'll set to white for the snow. Fantastic. I'm liking this. And then this one will make look a little bit different. Um, this one will have purple plant life. Because that'll look cool. Yes. <laughs> High elevation, still white. And then low elevation, we'll set to... Once again, tan. Gotta go in more of an orangey area. There we go. There we go. We've terraformed two planets using only tidal forces. No stars involved. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye!